So good day, comrade subscribers. So I'm pretty close to finishing my Tech 1G, but um, I haven't put the uh, chips in yet. I don't want to put them in and, until I'm uh, ready to go, but um, I'm missing just a couple of final parts. Dip switch, uh, the um, LED bar graph lights here, and um, I don't know what happened to my crystal. I ordered a crystal. I think I used it on something else. Um, and if you know, and uh, and the VR uh, the variable resistors potentiometers. So I'm very close. I don't want to do another another video part three where I'm almost finished. I want the next video I want to do is I've finished it, put the ROM in, and uh, try and get it to boot up. So whilst I wait for those final parts to come in, um, let's pull something else apart. So let's start with the Tesla PMD10 power supply. So I really want to get into the computer actually. I want to check out the keyboard. Um, but traditionally in my videos, we always start with the power supply. Um, now this is my Naboo fan. I was thinking actually, it's rated at 115 volts. 115 volts. Um, running it on 240 volts and use it as my uh, <laughs> fume extractor once I fix the uh, that common issue. Um, so yes, <laughs> I'm thinking of that. Which way does the, which way does the, goes out that way. So have it set up that way, sucking the fumes. <laughs> anyway, I digress. So what should I do with this cord? Should I, and say, just chop this end off and put an Aussie plug on, or just unscrew this and then put this on an Aussie cable. Um, flexo. Yeah, well, anyway, we'll figure it out. So here is the PMD10, so it's just missing, missing one rubber foot, so it's a bit unstable at the moment. But yeah, 220 volts in. Nice, nice solid on-off switch. And then we have our five pin DIN output to the computer, to the PMD85. And of course, ooh, um, flathead, flathead screws. So that one looks like it's got some security snot on it. So it looks like maybe this one's never been opened. I guess I should just plug it in and see what it does, but people people complain. They say, oh no, don't you know, Tesla PMD10s are, are notorious for having faulty blah, 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 blahs. You should never switch them on. So, well, no, I didn't know that. the security slot in there there's the screw and out she comes okay Ooh, a bit of a two-tone we've got here. Don't know if that's intentional. Okay, top comes off. Wow, shiny inside. Okay, so what do we got? Pretty standard. I guess most of them are going to be Tesla parts, actually. Um, got some ICs as well. Couple of transformers. Got two diodes, two differently sized diodes. Okay, and we have another four normal looking diodes there, so maybe that's the rectification. A fuse here. So what's can't really see, okay does have some markings on it, so 220 volt primary, 
220 volt primary, secondary 24 volts. So, okay, looks like we, we stepped down to 24 volts. I assume we've got some sort of rectification here. We've got these four diodes there. Tesla, Tesla. I assume that's a, can't really see it, can you? 1987 date date stamp, SU160, whatever that is. So again, we've got another two diodes here. Okay, don't go adjusting that, Brett. What's a Tesla, Tesla brand electrolytics? It's an horrible ceramic. Nice square ceramics. So it's still a bit of a hodgepodge kind of, I don't know, manufacture. Okay, assume that MA780S, MA781, oh, oh, okay, 78, oh, okay, MA7805, so that's a regulator, regulator, so we've got a regulator, two regulators then. Okay. Right, so where's the minus five rail? Do we have a 7905 equivalent? I don't think that's, that's not a regular. I think that's pretty, pretty sure that's probably a, well, having said that, normally if it's a transistor, normally the case you have insulated, don't you? Normally the case is insulated. But in this case, it's not insulated. Maybe that is the negative five. I don't know. No idea. Pretending to be an expert. But it kind of, everything looks okay. Okay, we've got a 2.5 amp fuse down there. So I assume that's all okay. Relatively clean-ish. We've got some kind of... Um, this here uh, degrading a bit. Zoom back in again. That's degrading a bit. Um, yeah. All right. Um, well, yeah, so nothing, you can't see anything obvious, obviously bad in the power supply. So I'm assuming it should hopefully work. Uh, I can't see anything burnt or blowing up, but we'll see. Um, I'll say nice, nice switch action there. Um, give it a try, I guess. I can't really, can't really see anything obvious. Do, 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 do. So I could probably trace from under here where the minus five volts is coming from. But it doesn't matter. All right. And bottom of the case. All right. Whatever that means. So, yeah. So, unfortunately, just missing, missing one of these feet. So I might just take them all out and um, I might see if I can get a replacement. Otherwise, I'll just take them all out. Um, and well, if I can get a similar size replacement, I'll just replace them for new ones. Okay. Oh, and we've got a little green LED for power. So why not let us give this a burl? Now, where's all my adapter plugs? Let me just find this. I actually do have a, I forgot, I actually do have a Euro, um, what should we call it? Um, don't know if we'll take these. No, I don't think, it's got it's this Euro, not, not check. So it actually won't fit. It's not designed. All right. 
Next thing, we will do this. There we go. Oh, dinner might be ready. Let's, uh, all right. Plug her in. Don't know if it's on or not. Okay, so I don't know which one is energized and which one isn't. Green LED is not on. And then again, we have no load either. So, although it could be not working. Or it could be it needs a load. But, all right, switch it off for now. Go have dinner and come and check it later. All right, okay, so let's... Um Let's check some continuity, I guess. Uh, fuse. Fuse seems okay. Um, switch. Switch. One is up. So the two black wires are coming in. So let's see. Yep. I can't see any um, electrolytics obviously leaky or failed. Uh, they all look okay. I don't want to go change them all because they're all pretty cool Tesla. Tesla brand. Um, I guess I could check the transformer 24 volts out on the secondary. Uh, I could check the regulators. Um, I guess I could check to see if there's um, five volts, five volts coming out. Let's see the the diagram. There is a diagram, which is a little confusing. So this is apparently the pinout, maybe. So we've got ground. And we've got plus 5 volts, and we've got plus 12, and we've got minus 5. Problem is that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, possibly 7 pins. Um, I don't know how that relates. All I can say is that this little, this little widget there is, is the... Um, sorry, I'm just trying to get this around the same way. So if that widget there is that there, then it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> These two are ground. Okay, there's definitely two grounds on here. I think usually pin two is ground. Um, so that's a bit of a... I think that's not very helpful at all. see pin two yep so pin two's ground that I think is the 12 volt Okay, I guess that's plus five volts there. What? That's the center pin. I thought that was ground. That's a bit of a worry. So, I, well, I'm assuming that's the regulator. I'm assuming that's a 5-volt regulator. 7805. MA7805 next to an MA7812. I assume that's a regulator. So... If we follow, so the case is ground, obviously. We're all connected to ground. Let's 
So one pin should be input, one pin should be output. Is that not correct? Well, that's not right. That can't be right. Could that be a problem? Something shorting to ground, like perhaps this 5 volt regulator. I don't think that's correct behavior. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's the problem. Da -da -da, maybe the regulator has failed. Not a problem. I do have Western replacements. Interesting to... Why, how should I do this? Uh, it doesn't look like this is soldered in. So this ground, um, I could disconnect that. All right, let me get this sorted. Right, so yeah, I've had a look. It's definitely a five volt regulator, MA7805. You can still, get, still buy them pretty cheap as well. A 7812, and they also do a 7815 and a 7824. Um, but it's quite peculiar. So pin one, pin one is input, pin one is input, pin two is output, and case is ground. So definitely output should not be connected to ground. Um, but if I look. So this is so this is output, which should be five volts, which is oh, connected to that, which is this here, which seems to be a ground plane. So I'm utterly confused. What, how this could work? Um, that doesn't make any sense. Really, my brain's not working properly. Does that make any sense? Does that make? I don't. I tried to find a schema, a schema schematic. I uh, couldn't find one. Doesn't look like one is supplied with the power supply. So, pin one is the unregulated input. Pin 2 is the 5 volt regulated input. And then the case is ground. So why is the output grounded? And then looking under here, so this is, so it looks like we've got some ferrite beads here. So we've got the 5 volt output, ferrite beads, which goes to here which is ground. So that's why I don't understand. It would make sense if it was connected to this one maybe. Was I touching there? What was I touching? Okay, there is resistance between those two. That, wait, what? All right, so this is some coming from this. I think this is a transformer, which is connected. So this is insulated. We've got, okay, so, okay, so that's not insulated there, right? So this case is definitely connected to ground. 
that on this one here, we've got this insulation. Why is that done? Just it's definitely, definitely it does seem to be insulated. Strange way of doing it. I wouldn't even risk. Why? Why risk? Why risk that? You see what I mean? Because this is grounded. Well, it doesn't seem to be grounded, does it? <laughs> well, I'm, okay, I'm, all right, I'm, I'm confused. That's definitely an MA7805. Five volt regulator. Case is ground. Ah, oh, you idiots. Yeah, okay, you've obviously realised it 10 minutes ago. This is the minus 5 volts, isn't it? The That's why that's why the output's grounded because the output is 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 um is the zero volt reference or the ground reference. Therefore, the output is 5 volts. Therefore, ground becomes 5 volts beneath this so this is the actual this is minus five volts <laughs> all right okay yeah so i told you i'm slow it's, it's, i haven't pulled a power supply power supply part for a long time all right so i've got 12 volts minus five volts and then plus five volts is being generated by some other means um so yeah it does look like these were originally seven pin on the PMD 85-1 and and dash twos and then they moved to a five pin so that's I have to pull the machine apart I think yeah let me pull the machine apart that might be more interesting um, so yeah so I'm not any closer I'm, so I'm not sure I'm gonna have to figure out the pin out I haven't well, I have seen some pin outs here but it seems pretty hard to find information on this machine so let me put this back together. Da, 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 da. Uh, apologies if you've been screaming at the screen for the last five minutes. Uh, they're, they're using the five volt regulator for minus five volts. I assume that's what they're doing. Da, da, da. Okay. All right, let's just open the machine because I really want to have a look at that keyboard. I'm going to check that keyboard out. And we'll come back to this. Well, we'll figure out the pin out and then we can figure out if what voltages we're getting out of this, whether we need a load or not. Right, I'm back. Let's have a look at this fellow, shall we? Um Yes, very, very small. I don't know, what can I compare it with? <laughs> One ruble coin. Um, I've got some, got some key caps handy. That's a normal size key cap. Uh, let's have a look. So, quite, quite small in comparison. <laughs> Bit, uh, yeah, a bit sticky. So let's ask, let's see why. So I have started work on um, the EEPROM module. I'm not designing it, I'm redrawing an older, so what someone else has done. Um, so I can get some of those made up and See how we go. I don't even know if this machine works. So, um, right, let's see. So we do have, yeah. So Mr. Volkman did say we've got these things here, but I don't see anything in there. Um, I think these holes are just for rubber feet. So let's just. 
and do that. Now, I don't see any security snot on here either, so the machine might have been opened. So it is interesting, actually, those um, MA7805s are rated at 2 amps. And that's what it reckons on here, plus 5 volts at 2 amps. Minus 5 volts at 400 milliamps, and once an amp at 12 volts. Interesting. Okay. Let's get the screws done. And we'll have a look. Oh, okay. Shorter screws at the front. Longer screws at the back. All good old commie flatheads. Right, so. Let's see how we go here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm not too sure. I say this seems pretty stuck. It doesn't that doesn't, yeah something something's not right about that. ROM module. can't see any other way there's no other no other way of detaching that ROM module that I can see there is definitely nothing there's definitely no screws in here holding it in place so let's see on this side mm -hmm. all right I will fill fill it around with this ah, I've got the ROM module coming off and it's just yeah it's just very very well yeah there we go. It was pulling the adapter out of the uh, out of the machine. So we've got pins, pins on this side. Of course, probably some sort of connector you can't buy anymore. So that's the uh, so the ROM plugs in, and yeah, it was kind of yanking the socket. That doesn't look too good, does it? It's really yanking the socket out. It was just because it was just plugged in so hard. So yeah, basic. It's the basic ROM module. Uh, but having done that, still, I'm assuming you shouldn't have the ROM module in there when you're pulling it out anyway. So I would have had to have removed it. Aha, uh -huh. yes, exactly, you have to remove it. There's a screw here. Which probably, which I don't know what that's doing. <laughs> Is it doing anything? Looks like it's coming out. Slowly. Is that 
going to give me more. I think so. I think I'll slide it over. Slide it over this metal bit here first, I think. Over that. Then up a bit. So keyboard's coming with the top case by the looks of it. There we go. All right. Wow, sockets. Don't mind if I do. Ah. Very interesting. Um, looks like our uh, comrades in. Looks like our comrades in um, the Slovakian Socialist Republic are running out of chips. So we've got some Soviet chips in here. Um, KR five eight zero V five five eight. So that'd be eight two five five. Um, peripheral interface, programmable interfaces, I guess. Um, and here's the 8080 down there. So we do have a Sl uh, Slovakian, or Czechoslovakian. There's our 8080 clone. I'll put my glasses on to make sure. Yep, MHB8080A. Nice, nice and easy. Uh, then we have an MH8228, so I assume that's an 8228 clone, and we've got an 8255A, we've got a whole bunch of ROMs, 8255A there, um, this, okay, this is 64 kilobit RAM by the looks of it, um, so it's Soviet, Soviet RAM, ceramic. Cool. Very, very gently. How cool is that? But for the first time, it's socketed. Thank you. Thank you, Tesla. Gorgeous. Look at that. How beautiful is that? So that's a 60, maybe 64K by one bit um, RAM, uh, dynamic RAM, I guess. That's gorgeous. Um, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> I love that. A little bit of dust on the board. Um, lots of uh, lots of sockets, which is nice. Um, quite a bit of dust as well. The um, keyboard looks like we can we can disconnect the keyboard. It looks like we've got a looks like it's socketed here because interestingly I don't know what's going on there let me just disconnect the keyboard uh, that was nice and easy um, what's going on here I don't know if that's some sort of patch job or why was that done I wonder Hmm. But um yep, yeah, we'll pull that we'll pull the keyboard apart next. But I just oh look at all look at all that DRAM. Oh it's gorgeous. Um now we've got Soviet e, uh, EPROMs here. Bloody power input looks a bit dodgy. Over here. So this is our power input. And this will be our video out. I don't know if it's RGB. I don't, I've read it was black and white. Um, and this is obviously all our interfaces over here. Hey, there's our resistor network. Cool. Good solid resistor network there. Um, yes, yeah, so I might pull this out and give it a good wash tomorrow, I think. But yeah, so we've got K, was it KR580VV55? So that's the 8255s, I assume. So we've got a, 
we've got a Tesla brand 8255 and then we've got some Soviet 8255s down here another Soviet 8008 oh, 8000 series clone chip KR580VI53 so I don't know what an 8053 does an 8251 up here so there'll be an 8251 clone so I'm not sure what that is um, <laughs> okay <laughs> so I'm guessing this is the modulator um, RF or UHF TV modulator box for that output there um, why it's got all that shit on it I certainly don't need it Um, oh, okay, maybe to insulate it from, oh, there, this section of the keyboard. So it looks like it's very close. So I could even pull that out. I don't really need that. I could pull that out. But, um, yeah, so I'll definitely um, I'll take a photo, pull all the chips I can out and um, give it all a good wash so here's the um, so this is the ROM the ROM port so you can see actually it's connected to here and to here so I guess this is this is the inter this is obviously the, um, the interface including the ROM so we've got all this kind of connectors here to connect this down to here across to there very cool, uh, but I just love. Look at that. That is, that is a thing of beauty. <sighs> um, yeah, I think. Uh, oh, okay. Let's one, one last thing. Let's um, let's just have a look at this keyboard. Um, we'll leave the ROM module for later because I need to actually pull that apart to get the PCB dimensions. Let's um. Sorry, so I haven't done a video for a while, so hopefully I'm getting back into the swing of it. I don't know. Da, 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 da. Okay, let's have a look how these keys are. Two more screws um, so yeah it definitely looks like the key switches I won't be able to pull the key switches out because they are um, got the plastic melted on here but let's see if I can get the key caps off at least so nice swirly pattern um, MH74154. So I don't know if that's a 74 series. We've got a little piezo. Interesting. Very fine. Fine wire there with some glue to protect it. Um, green, red, and amber LEDs. So I'm not sure. So I might might even redo. Looks like only half of them are soldered. <laughs> well, I guess, so. okay, they're soldered on this side as well. So maybe I might, I might even redo, I might, might redo this cabling so it's a bit better. Um, yeah, let's see if we can get a, put that over there. And, um, See, that key is okay. There's a <laughs> gotta be careful of the speaker. So that key is okay. I'll probably pull all these off anyway. I don't know if there's Okay, 
looks like it's coming off. Okay. All right, yep, so they pull off pretty easily. Got a spring. And um, then the key stem, which is now stuck. <laughs> Interesting. How does this work then? Okay, let's put the key stem back on. Let's put the key back on. Now, why is there two? And that's working again. Okay, why is there two end of lines? Don't know. Stop. Where's? Let's have a look up here. So maybe some lubrications in order is required. These seem to all be kind of working. Okay, that one's not working. Okay. It does look like there is maybe some damage to the key switch. I don't know if that's maybe causing I don't know if that's maybe causing the problem there. That looks a bit different to the rest of it. Not really sure how it works. Okay, so. Oops. Getting a bit late here. Let's just put that back on. Um, where's let, let me get my spray. Try some dry PTFE just in case it makes a difference. If I'm doing it wrong, tell me in the comments. Don't tell me I'm an idiot, just tell me um, maybe don't do that. Oh, gee, that works much better. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit dodgy. Seems to be working better now. Now number two, so definitely I think that's that might might have fixed it. So it looks like I'm gonna have to take all the although Yeah, it's not a very good keyboard, I'm afraid. So maybe problems I'm saying now that I'm using KiCad, I've got more confidence to design my own stuff. So, for example, um, you know, design a new keyboard. Problem is, these keys are so small that um, they're not going to fit in this space. Um, unless I can find, I'm going to have to find smaller keycaps. So these are like kind of like the standard keycaps that I've got. They're way too small, they're way too big, so it's going to take up too much space. I have to have a think about it. But definitely, I think I could do with a new keyboard. Um, I am not confident. I am not confident with these keys. So that's working okay now. But then if you maybe hit it, no, I don't know, maybe. Uh, it might, might be all right, but I'm going to have to pull the whole thing apart. Um, redo this. <laughs> all this before I know if the machine actually works. Um, yeah, I think, um, I think I'll give the machine a bit of a clean. Then I will try powering it on with a, um, with a Meanwell power supply that I've got. And um, we'll go from there. All right, okay. So hopefully that was of some interest. Wasn't too boring. Um, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for, for not despairing. And um, hopefully I have some more interesting videos for you as we go.
Um, oh, now I now I've been putting uh, end credits or end cards, so I need to leave it run for another twenty seconds, don't I? Um, but yeah, I love these. These are awesome. Don't touch them, Brett. Don't touch them. So this big round thing there. I'll probably um, probably unscrew this. Unscrew it all. Give it all a good clean. And we'll see how we go. Uh, we've got El Nino been declared for Australia. So I think that is La Nina is when it's really wet, I think. Because we haven't had rain for months. And we're coming into summer. So I think they've just declared El Nino. And they have been doing burn-offs down in Sydney. But yeah, it's probably going to be a really bad bushfire season again, unfortunately. Let's see. Unplugs from there. Let the last screw out. There we go. Anyone in Slovakia can get me some of these or Czech even in Czech Republic. I think I'll need some. Ah, let's check the pin spacing. Looks good. Yeah, two point or two point five four. So good. Okay, might be able to work around that then. <laughs> okay. Tantalum. Might replace that fellow. Okay. That's it. Bye for now.